In the literary world, names don't get much bigger than John Grisham's. The best-selling author is responsible for writing some of the most popular legal thrillers of the past 30 years, including A Time to Kill, The Firm, and The Pelican Brief, just to name a few. In 2006, he wrote his first nonfiction book, The Innocent Man, Murder and Injustice in a Small Town. It focuses on the murders of two women in Oklahoma, the four men who were convicted and the questions raised over their guilt. Now Netflix has turned the book into a six-part original documentary series of the same name. It premieres on December 14th. Here's a sample. In small towns like Ada, the prosecutors and the police are under enormous pressure. Winning means justice. Winning means everything. And along the way, if the truth gets blurred or forgotten or twisted or manipulated, that's too bad. And that's how we get wrongful convictions. That's how you get Ron Williamson and Dennis Fritz, Tommy Ward and Carl Fontana. And that's what happens so often in in criminal prosecutions. It's all about winning. And John Grisham joins us here in the studio. John, good morning. You're welcome. Morning. You have said that if you had written The Innocent Man as a novel, people wouldn't have believed it. Why is that? Uh, it's too incredible to believe. It's too, uh, you can't believe the system can uh, break down so badly. And, and so many things can go wrong. And uh, which is true with most wrongful conviction cases. Uh, there's a complete breakdown in the police investigation, the prosecution, one mistake after another, one injustice after another, and I can't create that stuff in fiction. Tell um, us about these two crimes. What was so unbelievable? Well, there were two, two murders in the small town in Oklahoma about 18 months apart, and both the crimes were unsolved. And um, the police struggled with them for a long time. In the first crime, the first murder, Debbie Sue Carter, the eventual killer uh, was the last man seen alive with the victim. But for some reason, the police chose not to investigate him. Mm -hmm. Didn't for a long time. They finally settled on two other guys, Ron Williamson and Dennis Fritz, and they were eventually convicted and sent to prison. And Ron Williamson came within five days of being executed yeah. for a murder he had nothing to do with. John, what led you to this story? I wasn't looking for another story when I saw this one. Yeah. Uh, Ron died in, 19, uh, in 2004. He'd been out for five years. I saw his obituary in the New York Times, and I was taken with it. It was a fantastic story. He was the first-round draft pick of the Oakland A's in 1972. Small-town hero, mm -hmm. great baseball player. In his little section of Oklahoma, people thought he was the next Mickey Mantle, mm -hmm. and he did, too. He had a big ego, great player, didn't work out. Went back to his uh, small town of Ada and started showing signs of mental illness and became kind of like the town drunk or whatever. And... So the police pinned this murder on him, and, and he was almost executed. You, know, you write the, the book, and then it gets to this Netflix documentary in the series. I'm curious what it was or what it is that you're able to do with this now that you couldn't do with the book. What, what was the reason in, in behind it? Well, first of all, I had almost nothing to do with the movie, <laughs> even though I'm the executive producer, right. whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had like nine or ten movies made. I don't get near them. Right. You yeah. know, I just, I, I, I read the screenplay. I talk about yeah. the idea. talk to the director. Meet the people making the movie. Uh, but I don't make movies. I don't know how to make movies. I don't want to learn. That's yeah. somebody else's thing. So I stayed away from it. But we always deal with, with good people who are, uh, you know, know what they're doing. In this case, it's a young director named Clay Twill, who's a real rock star in the documentary film world. Mm -hmm. And um, he's also from my town of Charlottesville, Virginia. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was not important. Uh, but I said, go with it. He had a great idea for it. He, they wrote a great script. And uh, I said, let's do it. And Netflix jumped behind it and mm -hmm. put up the money. And here we are. And it certainly reaches a different audience. We hope so. We hope it reaches a big audience. You, you, so go ahead. There were some taped confessions involved with these yeah. cases. Why do you think these four men were innocent? In the first murder, uh, Ron Williamson and Dennis Fritz, there really weren't confessions. And th those guys were convicted and exonerated by DNA. In the second murder of Denise Haraway, uh, two young men confessed. And the confessions are bogus. They're false confessions. They, they, were, they came about because of abusive interrogations by the police. And the, and the, the, the confessions matched nothing to do with the... Uh, with the, with the crime scene, okay? But those guys are still in prison mm -hmm. 33 years later. That, that murder has not been solved, no. okay, in my opinion, okay, in the, in the opinion of a lot of people. Watch the documentary, 
and you'll believe it too that they got the wrong guys. Is there some hope then that this will lead to possibly getting them exonerated and finding the real murderer? Oh, awareness always helps. Uh, both of those guys are still uh, fighting in court. They have lawyers. Uh, the Innocence Project is trying to help them, mm -hmm. you know, but it's been 33 years. You mentioned the Innocence Project, something you're personally involved with. W what sort of work are they doing here? Well, I'm on the board. I've been on the board since the book was published. When the book came out in 2006, they asked me to join the board, and I've been on the board since then, and I really enjoy the, this work. I mean, I do a lot. I've written about wrongful convi uh, convictions, exonerations. I've written about the death penalty. It's kind of what I enjoy writing about, obviously. Uh, but the Innocence Project uh, here in New York, uh, we, we work to get innocent people out of prison. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about 365 um, DNA exonerations in the past 25 years. Wow. Wow. Ron and Dennis were two of them in 1999, and we work every day with a, you know, a big staff that's not quite big enough because there are a lot of potential clients out there, a lot of innocent people in prison. It takes just one voice and one person to help. It takes a, it takes a, 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 good, a good legal team. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. My and, pleasure. And again, the series is called The Innocent Man. It will be available on Netflix December 14th.